Well, happy Friday, guys. We finally made it to the end of the week. I wanted to hop on here because, of course, uh, we're dealing with the air quality, the, the fire conditions, and um, the storm threat. Of course, we need the rain, and we're going to get some this weekend. Also still monitoring that threat for some strongly severe storms on Monday morning. It looks like there could be more of a severe weather outbreak to our west, but I don't think it's going to be uh, quite as elevated here. But here's a look at your current air quality. Again, this recorded or is recorded right before 8 a.m. Friday morning, March 28th, just in case you're watching it later in the day. Unhealthy for really much of Hamilton County, down into Ringgold, Jasper, Dunlap, that red dot, that's where the air quality is at its worst. Um, you can see that smoke, we have prescribed burns going on across Walker County, so that smoke is coming in with the southerly winds. I have wildfires and brush fires all across the southeast, uh, most notably in South Carolina and North Carolina. Some pretty big ones going on. Same areas that were hit with Helene just six months ago. It's just not a good situation. But uh, again, air quality not going to be good today if you have respiratory issues. Even if, even if you don't, you might want to limit your time outdoors because we're also going to have high levels of tree pollen. So imagine just all that pollen and the smoke particles just combining. Allergy sufferer's nightmare. I've already sneezed like five, six times today. So it's not going to get any better throughout the afternoon. As we take a look at your future scan, uh, this shows you where some of those prescribed burns are in the red and some of the bigger wildfires going on across western parts of South and North Carolina. So uh, several of those prescribed burns, you can see that showing up on our future scan, our future cast smoke. You can see real big fires going on into Carolinas where you have that extremely dense smoke. Not going to be that dense here, but still notice some of those plumes coming up where you see those beige colors. That's where it could get thicker this afternoon and evening. So Chattanooga in the running for that. Northeast Alabama, Walker Dade, Catoosa counties. Likely to see that stream of smoke, especially with some of those prescribed burns going on in Walker County. Also going to be at elevated fire danger. And of course, prescribed burns are important. Uh, they can help mitigate some of the extreme fire breakouts that that we've seen lately and also kill down some invasive species so they're they're good things but you know you don't want to do any personal burning like no bonfires tonight it's going to be a little bit breezy we have special weather statements in effect for high fire danger march is a breezy month so is april we've seen a lot of that low relative humidity combining those two things together oftentimes you'll get this so uh Again, just something to be mindful of as we take a look at your highs today. Outside of all that, it's going to be a warm one. Upper 70s to lower 80s here from Scottsboro up to Athens, Dayton, Blue Ridge, Dalton. So a very warm day in the making, but we do have changes on the way. Weekend storm chances, severe weather possible early next week. I'm talking Monday. That first round comes in Saturday night to Sunday. Weak disturbance comes through. Could be a couple showers. I don't expect much from this, but don't be surprised if you wake up to a little bit of rain Sunday. However, the daylight hours on Saturday should be okay, and the daylight hours, with the exception of Sunday morning, should be pretty dry as well. So we're going to get uh, generally a drier weekend with most of the rain coming Saturday and Sunday night, and then Monday morning, I would say between about 2 and 8, that's your latest timing, going to be the potential for some strong storms, maybe some severe weather with damaging winds, small hail. Maybe an isolated tornado threat. Uh, if this comes in around this time, we're not going to have as much instability to work with. Uh, but it is going to be overnight. We've just had overnight threats here lately. I don't know what it is. I, I don't think there's any rhyme or reason. Uh, call it coincidence or I don't know. It's just it, the way things have timed out lately. It's been early in the morning or late at night. Really no in between so far. But we do have uh, level two risk. That includes most of our coverage area in the yellow Sunday into Monday morning. So really don't expect much during the day on Sunday. But as we zoom out a little bit, you can see where that higher threat is. Uh, again, three in that orange that's where you're gonna have the best chance of severe weather during the day fort wayne indianapolis st louis nashville memphis and then as we get into the latter half of uh, this event <clears throat> sunday night into monday morning that's where we could have that higher risk but again any significant severe weather so i'm talking extreme winds tornado potential is going to be favored in this area so just to our west uh, north mississippi middle tennessee up through the midwest that's where the ingredients are going to come together best for uh, severe storms and the potential for some tornadoes, some of which could even be on the stronger side. So we'll watch this area closely. But again, this is going to move into our area. Uh, conditions aren't going to be quite as favorable for severe weather. Uh, but with that being said, we're still going to have that threat. And the Storm Prediction Center is also outlining a risk for Monday for the East Coast. That includes us, but that'll primarily be Monday morning. Again, I'm still expecting 2 to 8, kind of the time frame for all this across the Tennessee Valley. Here's a look at future gas for today. So the short term, 
quite a bit of cloud cover, a lot of smoke today. As we get into your Saturday, notice not a lot going on. Most of the rain stays to our west. Uh, we will have a couple spotty showers and then this little disturbance tries to move through. Our latest in-house model guidance has a lot of this kind of breaking up Saturday night into Sunday morning. I think that may be underdoing it a little bit. I think there will be more rain around, especially early parts of Sunday as we have some of this moisture move again. Again, I'm going to zoom out and kind of see this. This is the GFS, our American model. Um, it just gives us somewhat of an idea of when the rain may come. But notice throughout the day on Sunday, without the exception or with the exception of just a few showers, I think a lot of the daylight hours are dry. And then as we get into late Sunday and early Monday especially, there's going to be a front come through. Again, this isn't high resolution model data, but it does give us an idea of where the line might be. By five o'clock, it's moving across middle Tennessee, quickly moving across the Tennessee Valley. Notice by 11, it's already to our east, stable air moves in. So the rest of Monday, things are going to look a whole lot better here across the Tennessee Valley. And then moving into next week, it looks like we're going to enter more of an active or stormy pattern, which is good because we do need um, the rain here across the southeast to help with some of the ongoing wildfires. But of course, we'll also have to monitor uh, the severe threat. But we're going to have quite a bit of storm fuel on Sunday, kind of building in across the Mississippi River Valley, Gulf Coast. So these storms will have some energy to work with. And then as we get into Monday morning, we're not going to have as much storm fuel or low level cape or, or energy, whatever you want to call it. But we are going to have a lot of wind shear with that front. So we'll have the threat for damaging winds. Not seeing a whole lot of uh, tornado potential with this system, at least for us here immediately in our coverage area. We'll have to watch west of Chattanooga and then notice how that storm fuel kind of fizzles out Monday as that stable air starts to move back into the Tennessee Valley. So as of now, my main concern would be damaging wind gusts uh, with that main line. You can get to those Boeing segments where you can get you know, 50, 60, uh, 65 mile per hour wind gusts. Tornado threat gonna be low, not zero, so it can't completely rule out a spin up. Uh, especially west of Chattanooga. Large hail not looking likely. Um, flooding threat overall low, but we are going to get beneficial rain. I think from this system, um, from Saturday night to Monday, we could pick up a solid inch or two of rain. And then next week, we have more rain chances. So over the next seven days, which goes all the way until Thursday evening, we could pick up two to three inches of much needed rain here across the Tennessee and much of the southeast. So this is good news, especially as we extend into the Carolinas where some of those large wildfires are going. So we are about to transition uh, to an active pattern and I'll show you a precipitation trend um, over the next six to 10 days. This takes us into the month of April, usually a pretty active and stormy month. It looks like that's how it's gonna start off. Plus it's gonna be very warm with temperatures in the 70s and 80s. So no major cool downs. It will be slightly cooler Tuesday, but I don't think we have any freeze or frost uh, potential over the next seven days. It's gonna be very breezy this weekend We'll have that storm potential, especially Sunday into Monday morning. And then it looks like by the middle of next week, uncertain on the timing, but definitely going to be the chains for some more storms as another front works across the Tennessee Valley. So we'll keep you posted on that. We'll have more updates coming in throughout the weekend. And of course, you want to join us Monday morning as we track some of these strong to severe storms moving across the Tennessee Valley. Uh, forecast still may have some tweaks coming up, so continue to check back. Of course, Hannah will be on this afternoon, and then we'll have the Chief Meteorologist David Carnes in later this evening for the latest. He'll overlook or look over some of that latest model data. So continue to check back, enjoy your Friday, and just be mindful of that poor air quality.